Today, I am going to explain a post-apocalyptic science fiction series called The 100. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Several years in the future, the Earth faces a devastating nuclear apocalypse. A blast of radiation kills most humans and animals and wipes out all kinds of life from the Earth's surface. The survivors fly to the space stations orbiting the Earth that were then made for the purpose of space exploration. Currently, it is 97 years after the apocalypse. The space stations have joined hands to become one big civilization called the Ark. The living situation on Ark is not ideal because of the population growth and the limited resources. The people believe that after a hundred years, humans can return home to the ground. Although there are only three years left for the big day, the limited resources threaten the life of the citizens of the Ark. Hence, the Chancellor and the Board of Governors have to follow strict rules to decrease the population immediately. Because of this, any crime on the Ark is punishable by death, except if someone under 18 is found guilty, they are locked up in a box-like prison. One of such prisoners is Clark Griffin. She is the daughter of the Chief Medical Officer, Abby, and the Chief Engineer of the Ark, Jake. Since both her parents are on the Board of Governors, she is expected to have privileges, but like any other criminal, she is currently locked up. Suddenly, two guards barge in and make her wear a wristband. They forcefully bring her out alongside other prisoners. Abby stops them for a second to tell Clark that everything will be all right. She is about to land on the Earth. It turns out that 100 criminals from the prisons are being sent to Earth's surface. To test its habitability, they could immediately die of radiation or because of the hostile climate, but the group has no choice whatsoever. On the ship, Clark meets her childhood best friend and the son of the Chancellor, Wells. He deliberately committed a small crime to board the ship to accompany her. However, Clark doesn't appreciate the gesture. It turns out that her father is dead and it is somehow Wells' fault. As the ship lands, a video plays on the monitor of the Chancellor asking them what they should do when they land. They are tasked to make their way to the former Mount Weather Emergency Operations Center, which is filled with water and supplies enough for 300 people. The ship soon enters the Earth's atmosphere and lands with a crash. Two people who had gotten up from their seats die instantly. Finn, the guy who urged them to get up, is still safe. Then, we are introduced to the siblings, Bellamy and Octavia. Octavia was hidden under a table by her mother for the first 16 years of her life because no one is allowed to have a second child on the Ark. Bellamy and Octavia were separated when she was caught, and their mother was floated into space. The brother and sister reunite after months. Bellamy instantly declares herself the leader and opens the door to the ship. As the group stands back in anticipation, they are welcomed by a greenery and land filled with vegetation. They run outside to their home for the first time in their lives. As the group celebrates, Clark brings out a map and sees that they have been dropped some miles away from Mount Weather. Finn follows her, interested in what she is doing. Back on the Ark, one of the members of the Council named Kane briefs everyone on the condition of the 100. Because of the crash, they have lost all communication with the prisoners and will no longer be able to monitor their location. But because of the wristband, their vital signs are still measurable. They see that two people died while landing, but the plausible explanation could not be a blast of radiation and just an accident. Meanwhile, things are starting to get intense on the ground. Clark and Wells want to get to Mount Weather as soon as possible, but the others do not like being ordered around. Bellamy and Octavia go against them and claim that they should go to the mountain and bring back the supplies. They want the privileged to do the work and not the working class. Wells gets into an altercation with a guy named Murphy and hurts his leg before Finn stops the fight. Bellamy tells Octavia that he did something very bad to get on the ship. If the governors find out about it, they will never forgive him, which means they will have to make sure to survive on the ground. Clark also reveals that if they take off their wristbands, people on Ark will think they are dying and will not come looking for them. This is good news for Bellamy, since he can make everyone take off their bands and form a new civilization of his own. After that, Octavia, Finn, Clark, and two of their friends, Jasper and Monty, set out to look for the mountain. A few minutes later, they come across an animal and watch it in awe, only to then realize it is mutated and has two heads. Ah, it's cute. Meanwhile, on the Ark, Abby finds out that the Chancellor has been shot. She and her team of doctors try their best to save him and use a higher dosage of blood and anesthesia than allowed for a citizen to have. The guards find out that Bellamy is responsible for shooting the Chancellor, which explains why he doesn't want the officials coming to the ground. 
Kane wants to eliminate hundreds of Ark citizens and save only the ones who are contributing to their society. That way, they can increase the expectancy of their space station to three years. If more people are not killed, they cannot survive more than four months in the current living conditions. Now that he is Deputy Chancellor, he plans to put his idea into action. Meanwhile, the group on the expedition finds a river and jumps into the water. Suddenly, Octavia is attacked by a strange fish and snake-like creature. Jasper jumps to her rescue and saves her while the others distract the fish. At night, everyone at the camp burns their wristbands at Bellamy's order. He asserts his dominance when Wells tries to stop him. By now, he has become the leader of the Hundred. At night, Bellamy and his minions forcefully make Wells take his wristband off. Back on the Ark, Kane finds out that Abby used more than the legal amount of blood to save the Chancellor. Using his power as the Deputy Chancellor, he orders her to be floated for the crime. She is taken into the airlock and is seconds away from being sent to space. When the Chancellor arrives and stops them, he pardons her and thanks her for saving his life. On Earth, the team reaches a river. Jasper jumps to the other side and finds an old board showing them the way to Mount Weather. But just then, someone throws a spear at him that hurts him gravely. The others run back back to the camp to save their lives. Halfway to the camp, they hear Jasper scream and realize that he is still alive. When they go back to look for him, someone has already taken him away. At the camp, things get heated as Bellamy declares there are no laws or rules. Murphy goes rogue and starts a fight with Wells. They only stop when the other group arrives. Everyone is informed about the dangerous grounders who took Jasper away. They decide to be more careful, but are still adamant about removing the wristbands. The next morning, Clark, Bellamy, Wells, and Murphy go out on a rescue mission looking for Jasper. Since Bellamy has a gun, they hope to be safe from the grounders. Then, we are introduced to a zero-gravity mechanic and Finn's girlfriend, Raven. She finds out that they are not allowing people to visit their close ones in prison. Raven is young, ambitious, and not afraid of anything. When she realizes something is off about the new rule, she makes it her mission to find out what. She secretly breaks into Abby's lab, but is caught on the way. On looking at the screen with the prisoner's vitals, she registers they have been sent to Earth. She also tells a confused Abby that the 100 might be removing the wristbands. This helps Abby to present a theory in the next council meeting. At the end of the meeting, they decide to abstain from taking any decision for 10 more days and give the 100 a chance to report back. If they cannot communicate, even then, they will have to kill more people on the Ark for the others to survive. Back in camp, Octavia meets Monty. Monty is a communications expert who is working to build up connections with the Ark. He is also best friends with Jasper and hopes he will be back soon. Octavia helps him with his task, going against her brother's rule. Meanwhile, the other team continues looking for Jasper and finds a waterfall on the way. Finn and Clark seem to be getting close to each other, which makes Wells jealous. Suddenly, they find Jasper's goggles and realize he is nearby. Eventually, they find him hung from a tree with his wound treated. Clark almost falls into a trap in front of the tree, but is saved by Bellamy. They bring Jasper down but are attacked by a wild boar just then. Wells kills it with the gun he stole from Bellamy. I liked this scene better when it was a polar bear. Finally, the group has food for the night and has rescued their friend. On the Ark, Abby asks Raven to repair an old escape pod in nine days, planning to return to the Earth to save the others. Raven agrees, but only if she also gets to go to the Earth with her. At night, the 100 slaughter the animal and roast it for food. Bellamy makes people take their bands off to get a bite. Finn gets food for both himself and Clark without getting theirs off because Bellamy's minions are scared of him. The two then enjoy dinner together. The scene cuts to a flashback. Clark's father Jake, the Chancellor, and Wells are watching a century-old football match. Jake gets up to leave to check a system maintenance report. When he returns later, he tells Abby that the Ark's system is failing and they have not more than a year of life support left. Jake wants to tell the people what is happening to ensure that everyone knows about their future, but Abby is strictly against the idea since it will cause panic. As they chat, Clark overhears their conversation. Later, she is with Wells, who notices she is tense about something. Clark tells him that her father is planning to go against the council's order and tell the people about the short time they have left. Wells promises to not tell anyone because if they found out, Jake will be considered a criminal and will be floated. 
Later that day, Clark approaches Jake and tells him that she can help him with his mission. However, right then, the guards barge in and arrest both of them. Since Jake is an adult, he is floated immediately, while Clark is imprisoned for being his accomplice. She assumes that her best friend told his father about the secret that got her father killed. On the ground, Jasper is back, but in very critical condition. The grounders seem to have applied medicine to his wounds, but he will still die if not given proper medication. He moans and whines in pain, causing the others to ask him to die. Except, that is, for the group that rescued him, who tries their best to make him better. Clark meets a little girl named Charlotte, who has recurring nightmares about the Chancellor executing her parents. She was arrested for attacking a guard, which makes her hate the Chancellor even more. Three days have passed since the group rescued Jasper, but his health is not getting any better. Most of the campers want to kill him, but Clark insists there is still hope. She studies the plant the grounders have used on Jasper, trying to find more of it. Wells, who has studied Earth's botany, finds out it is seaweed, probably found in a water body that is reddish in color. Finn knows a place like that and brings the others to it. On their way, they find a years-old automobile with only its door outside the ground. They plan to explore it later, prioritizing Jasper's health first. Eventually, they find the seaweed, but right after they secure it, they are faced with a large storm of poisonous fog. The trio runs away before getting inside the automobile to save their lives. Somewhere else, Bellamy and his minions have come out to hunt. He hears a noise from behind him and throws a spear, only to see Charlotte. He sympathizes with the little girl being sent with a bunch of prisoners and includes her in the hunt. Suddenly, they are also attacked by the poisonous clouds. Bellamy brings the little girl to a cave and saves them both, but he hears one of his teammates, Adam, screaming outside. At the camp, everyone gets inside the ship to protect themselves from the clouds. Finn finds a bottle of alcohol in the place they are stuck. As they talk, the conversation about Clark's father is brought up. She blames Wells for betraying her and causing her father's death. Wells apologizes for the hundredth time, but it is not enough. Bellamy also shows his good side by waking up a scared Charlotte. He makes her understand that she must kill her inner demons to not be afraid anymore. The next morning, the cloud passes and everyone comes out. Finn has discovered that Wells is hiding something about Jake's death because he doesn't talk about it at all. He asks Clark to make sure if Wells was the one who reported her father that resulted in his death. Somewhere else, Bellamy finds Adam on the ground. His body has been mutilated because of the poisonous fog. He begs Bellamy to kill him, not being able to handle the pain anymore. Clark arrives at the right time and hums a rhythm before stabbing him in the neck and ending his misery. Charlotte witnesses the incident, and it leaves a lasting impression on her. The group returns to the camp at night and immediately takes care of Jasper. After what happened in the woods, Bellamy wants to help Clark, knowing that she is a good person. A while later, Clark approaches Wells and asks him if he told his father about Jake's plan. Wells keeps quiet, which only makes Clark more nervous. She realizes it was her mother who reported her father and was the cause of his death. Wells just wanted to save her from misery and took the blame on himself. Clark apologizes and cries in his arms. Then, we see Jasper wake up, having recovered because of the medicine he was given. Everyone from the group surrounds him and jokes about the situation. As the vault fills with laughter, outside, Wells is alone. Charlotte approaches him and asks if she can stay by him for the night. Suddenly, she stabs him in the neck and hums a rhythm like Clark did earlier. She wants to kill him because his father floated her parents, and it is the only way she can get rid of her demons. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.